So a couple of weeks ago, I tested this kind of Voxer mentoring I call, where I would kind of have a few students on a monthly basis, give them one-on-one -on -one access to me on Voxer, and sort of give feedback on their trades and things they go through whenever they need feedback on it. One of my students was Graham, and Graham is a really cool guy trading the same strategy I trade, the Mogul Universal, and some breakouts as well. And he sent me his PDF of his trade recently. I gave him feedback as a video. And then I want to share with you how to avoid fake reversals the way I taught Graham how to do it. And some signs in terms of price actions you can use to spot these fake reversals. We'll dive right in. So this is a trade here that Graham took on the PDF that I gave him a review for. So on USD Singapore, on the one hour chart, a very, very simple trade, uh, Bong Joon Universal, looks very nice, but you'll see why this trade doesn't work out. And in fact, there was a loss. So I'll tell you the same thing I told him, step by step, and we'll begin by going here on the charts. Now I draw my zones in my chart first thing first, is I always have these support resistance areas in the issue daily chart that I draw them on. And the trade that Graham took was over here. So I'll just draw this thing right here. This one was the trade that Graham took. So sell trade here was a stop. I believe his target was 203 to one. So we'll just put it like this for now. Okay, would have worked out if you didn't have this here, this stop out first. But what else that doesn't work out? Well, a few things. So this is a one hour chart here. And what I'll do is I'll just try to go back and see the big, and through the bigger time frames. So overall we are here. Okay, so why do we know when price is at this level? Let's have a look. Okay, this is kind of what it would look like if we didn't have the future price in, in the, the chart. So let's see. Well, we have a few things going on. We have price here in a downtrend. So it's pretty clear that price is making lower lows and lower highs. We see this by, of course, these high here, the high, the high, getting, of course, lower over time. Yeah, a few consolidation here in between, but it's getting lower overall. Okay, and the lows are doing the same thing. Lows, 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 and of course here again. But what we see right here, and we've had the same instances around here, is we have price doing some consolidations over time. So we have this one here, which is price making consolidation. We just see this by the weeks. If you go on a forward chart, it's gonna be even more clear, right? We have this consolidation here, price making us a range with this high over here and this low over there. Now there's a good chance we are going to break out of the range and go down. But one thing we never want to assume, we never want to take a breakout trade when it's within the range. What this would mean is, let's say we have a range over here, and we know price is likely to break down. We never want to take a breakout trade here. Because why? Well, because it's simple. Chances are that price will go back here and then push back up more, then maybe break out again after. So we have a good chance price can pull back in between the range and stop us out. It's very tough to take a breakout trade when, pri when price is within the range, because first you don't know which side is gonna break, it could break the other side. And second, well, you have a lot of room for choppiness and price going back and forth within that, that range and stop you off multiple times. So a perfect example of that here, right? We are within the range. We don't want to assume a breakout when you are here in the middle of the range, because that would be very low probability. Sure, it could work out. It could be a very nice, like big reward, big reward setup here. But if we just target 3 to 1, that's just not enough to give us the good low probability high reward trade in that case, okay? That's the first thing. Now, if you go see the setup here, as you know, I like to trade these Bong Joon reversal setup. So I'm looking for a break of the Bong Joon with two candlesticks and then an engulfing candle that's showing us a close below the door of the previous candlestick, like we had over here. Okay, these arrows here on the charts are all setups. Now, they could be valid or not, but it will basically enter below the low, sub plus above the high, Anywhere to risk, I tend to do two take profits, one to one as a first take profit, and then three to one as the other take profit. Now in this case here, we probably have a break even trade. This would be a nice one because we're at the top of the range mostly. We have more room to go in that price. Now of course the price, as you can see, went down, went to pull back up, and then went back down again after. So we could have a few different entries here. But that makes sense because now we're looking for a reversal at the top of the range, which makes a lot more sense in that case. Okay, we are here. Looking for this, one to one is somewhere here. Okay, that's a good trade, that, that, that makes sense. Of course, we're gonna step out in the second one, but we can have a break even here or a partial profit. Now, when we get to here, the trade that Graham, my student took. Okay, here we go. Trade triggered here on this nice setup. Like this looks like very good price action. You have a big wick, then in the coffin cattle with the big wick again, closing below the low of the previous candlestick, which is perfect in my, my opinion, perfect textbook. We enter just below of that candlestick, our next candlestick here, which was triggered because you have a big wick. And then we kind of go that way. Now, 
here's my second tip when it comes to fake reversals. I found with my tests, and this is not very advanced, but I've kind of looked into this a lot myself, and it's my own observations, that if we have a reversal, so let's say we go from here to here, okay? If we have this happening in reversal, but the first candlestick after the reversal where we enter is a candlestick against or trade, then it tends to not work out too well for us. So what I mean is if we have a bearish candlestick here, okay? This is bearish, by the way. It's very clear. I know my drawings are amazing. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> and then this one here will be a bullish candlestick. So it goes against our trade. Then I would tend to myself close my trade here. Because we don't have any momentum with that reversal. Prices actually just go back up and stop us out in that case. Okay, you can see here the second candlestick after or bearish engulfing is a bullish one. Plus, we have a big wick showing us that the sellers were able to push it down right over here, but then the buyers push it right after back to here. That's a very bad sign for reversal here. It's a lot of pressure from the buyers stepping into start that reversal. So, myself, what I would do is if I see this now these days, I'll just get out right here at the close of this candlestick. I say, well, that move doesn't happen. I'll go out with a small loss, a very tiny loss. If that one here is 1%, then that could be like a, I don't know, 0.05% loss, which is pretty much nothing. So it's better to get out early than late at your full stop loss in that case, if it's not going to work out in any case. And then we see kind of price here unfold. Of course, it goes in favor a little bit. It always has to be. But then you see that that moving average here, that middle band of the longest band is acting like a support. Now that's totally normal, it could do that also. But whenever you see a lot of price action in the opposite side at this middle band, it's showing us that the price could react to that band. And it happens quite a lot. This is a moving average, the price can react to it, 20 SMA. So if price reacts to it and goes back up, it's a bad sign for your trade. So you'll see here we have this exact move. We have a bu big bullish off in candle. We have a small pullback here, which is a bit kind of not too good, but still. Then we have another big engulfing candle. That should be here a sign to get out because we've got two candlesticks, two bullish engulfing candles, which are very strong. And that just gives us a lot of clues that we shouldn't be in that trade. We should be probably out because we have no momentum. And then that one here, that third candlestick, third bearish engulfing candle. This one here, the big one, is just showing us that, yeah, it's just over. Price, the bars are stepping in very strongly. We need to have a big shift in the market which we could still have, but less likely. Big shift in the market to change the direction of this uh, market here, in that case. So we'll want to stay away from this. Then as you see, if you go forward, price just kind of resists a little bit. Now we have a bit of here, almost a opposite candlestick, but it kind of closed as a bullish one. Then we continue. Then that big wick here step us out and we get out of that trade at a full stop loss. But notice how you could have avoided that trade multiple times. First, with the zoning, not taking a trade in the middle of a sideways market here, first step. Second thing is this second candlestick after a trade is bullish, showing us that the bars are stepping in strongly. Not good for momentum on our trade. And third is whenever we have this bullish engulfing candle here at, of course, the SMA. And then we've got a second one. That's a good sign to get out. And we've got, of course, more and more and more, but that's just too late for you. Uh, you could have got a, gotten out here break even multiple times or somewhere around that. So that's kind of how I see it. A lot of signs. Now keep in mind that price actions always give us some signs. We can either listen to them, we can look at them or not. We can always avoid them. If you're someone who doesn't manage their trades too much, you want you want to just set it and forget it. Forget about this, this lesson here. This is for guys who want to manage their trades better. But hope that was useful for you. Hope you can learn something out of this. Let me know your thoughts below. Let me know what you see on this trade too. If you see something different, I'm curious to know your thoughts and what you see on the charts. Uh, let me know in the comment section as always. If you want to get my help on your trades, you want to get some more mentoring, I'll leave a link below for you to apply and check out my coaching program. I'm not doing the Voxer thing anymore because it's a lot of demand, a lot of effort. And for the price I was doing it at, it's just not worth it. But if you want to get my help on coaching calls on Zoom, I'll be happy to do that. I'll leave a link below for that and you can book that call and see how we can work together. And with that being said, I'll catch you back here in the next video pretty soon. Ciao.